thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, have the opportunity to close this uh, colloque. I hope you had a good time. It was fun uh, for me to organize. Um, so the title of my talk is indeed the importance of being far from thermal equilibrium. I'm sure uh, everyone kind of got the uh, reference to the uh, play by Oscar Wilde. What I didn't notice until actually uh, this morning is this little title uh, that is down there, uh, A Trivial Comedy for Serious People, which I thought was very nice. So I take the liberty to rephrase my uh, title into a uh, non-trivial start my comedy for serious matter people, which I think kind of summarize uh, what uh, I'm doing, uh, let's say, here. Uh, so let's get started. Then I'll, I'll actually start from the very end, uh, just uh, acknowledging the people that uh, work with me in these two years that actually did all the nice uh, results that I will show you. Uh, so Francesco, Steven, Orazio, and Agai, uh, I guess you now, by now know them very well, better than me maybe, and, uh, and also the people in the group, in the lab, with whom I have uh, changed and collaborated. Okay, so the outline of my talk is, uh, is uh, the following. Uh, so since it's a general talk, I'll start uh, gently from uh, recalling some basic facts about equilibrium statistical mechanics, and then I will uh, drive you uh, slowly uh, out of equilibrium, hoping to not lose uh, anyone in, in the process. Uh, I will uh, try to discuss what are the challenges and the open question in, in this field from the point of view of a theoretical physicist. And then I will give you a few examples. Okay, so uh, the starting point uh, for me is the realization that quantum mechanics and statistical physics uh, uh, are, have done really uh, an amazing uh, job in uh, uh, describing a variety of phases of matter at different uh, uh, scales. Uh, and we all learn in, in textbook that uh, uh, as soon as you learn uh, start, start back and, and, uh, and quantum mechanics, you, you can start talking about bands and you can start talking about filling those bands with electrons and this tells you whether you have a metal or an insulator, which is already uh, remarkably uh, uh, Beautiful. Uh, then, of course, you know that uh, these electrons are interacting, and, and when these interactions are very important, uh, uh, what, you, what you have is something that is very far from being described uh, as a weakly correlated state. Uh, actually, you have uh, materials which can exhibit uh, exotic phase diagrams. Identical superconductivity is probably the most famous and still highly debated one, or uh, phases of thrusting magnetism quantum phase transition and so on. And, and the focus of, of, I would say, condensed matter physics in the last uh, decades uh, has been uh, to look at the physics uh, close to thermal equilibrium or, let's say, close to the linear response uh, regime. Uh, and the way uh, I see this, why this is uh, working in the end is, uh, goes back to uh, a very basic uh, fact of uh, Again, quantum mechanics, which is linear response theory, namely, as if you perturb your system only weakly, uh, what you are uh, probing are the fluctuation of your system close to uh, thermal equilibrium, and this fluctuation satisfies important and general identities, such as the fluctuation of dissipation theorem. So, this is a, a framework which is extremely successful. And, uh, and we are all happy about it. At the, end, at the same time, if we kind of knock to the door our colleagues who work on classical statistical physics uh, over 30 past years, uh, you realize that there is a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of interesting things going on as soon as you leave this uh, quiet and gentle uh, equilibrium uh, state. And this, this can be a system which just never really breaks, like classes, uh, system which goes to dynamic and critical point, which uh, exhibit turbulence or uh, pattern formation and so on. So, from a fundamental, I would say, uh, theoretical uh, point of view, you might ask uh, uh, what, what's going on with quantum system out of equilibrium. And if you think about it, uh, quantum mechanics is uh, one century old theory, so probably this question, and I'm sure this question was already uh, was already uh, posed a long time ago. What maybe uh, it's important to stress is that uh, what happened in the past uh, 15 years uh, is that the experiment somehow made uh, uh, 
such a step that allow people to ask those questions in a very, uh, let's say, controlled uh, way. And the experiment I have in mind uh, certainly starts from finance matter, uh, so here the idea is to take your uh, favorite material and instead of perturbing it with, uh, with uh, uh, temperature gradients or uh, magnetic field, you just expose it to strong, os uh, fastly oscillating uh, optical fields, which then are probed, and the system is probed on very short time scale. Short as a femtosecond, such that, such that you can really look at the dynamics of the electrons. So this was uh, something that um, definitely changed the, uh, the experimental landscape in this field. Also, uh, something kind of outside when that matter came in, this is atomic physics, the idea of trapping atoms in, in lattices made by sending wave of lights, uh, and, and these uh, atoms uh, can be controlled with an excellent degree, and the, the rate at this, which these atoms moves uh, or interact uh, among each other can be controlled in real time, so these uh, uh, cold atoms are perfect system to study uh, non equilibrium physics. physics. Something else that also uh, is very interesting to me is uh, something that came from uh, quantum optics, so the idea of cap coupling together many uh, nonlinear optical cavities, uh, in which uh, uh, some of the degrees of freedom which uh, uh, behaves collectively are uh, photons. Uh, so, so this is just an overview, and, uh, and, and in some sense uh, the, the big idea here, I think, uh, you can see it in two ways. Either you can think of uh, trying to control phases of matter in a way which is completely new, uh, one example that I always like to uh, quote is uh, the experiment, the series of experiments actually, done in uh, Max Planck in Hamburg, where people uh, claim and try to stabilize superconductivity by shining optical fields, so light induced, uh, light controlled superconductivity. This is, of course, very, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, another way of seeing all this is that you are really uh, trying to realize, to engineer phases of matter which don't exist in your uh, solid state uh, favorite material using synthetic quantum matter, so uh, system which behaves uh, quantum mechanically, like for example cold atoms. And so the, the, the theory stream, uh, this my dream uh, is in, in this context, is try to use uh, now uh, strong non equilibrium perturbation way beyond linear response theory to explore uh, phase diagram along directions that uh, you would not uh, think of. Uh, so, so this is a little bit the, uh, the, the, the question. Now, let me try to uh, frame this uh, uh, from a more uh, theoretical uh, uh, point of view. So, if you, uh, if you uh, think about uh, what we know uh, about uh, system in thermal equilibrium, there are uh, a few fundamental concepts, I would say, that start from the very basic intuition that uh, an equilibrium system goes to the ground state or to uh, the low energy state and the physics is dominated by the excitation around the state. And then out of this you build all sorts of machinery and a renormalization group, critical phenomena, phenomena universality and so on. So one big thing that I think uh, is challenged once you leave the equilibrium fixed point if you like is that uh, you cannot really only focus on low energy and especially you cannot really focus on the Hamiltonian uh, uh, or the spectrum by itself. So uh, you have to really think about uh, what kind of eigenmodes you have in your system and how these eigenmodes are populated. So really the luxury of being in equilibrium is that you really never have to care that much about the distribution function of your system. You know that Boltzmann uh, is, is there. And also the other thing that one has to somehow take, uh, take into account that non-equilibrium is, is of course extremely generic uh, uh, term and uh, there are different ways of pushing a system out of equilibrium and we will talk about uh, systems which are isolated, so uh, evolving with their own unitary dynamics but no contact with any external environment or otherwise systems which are open and in contact with this situation. And from, uh, let's say, those that are more uh, field theory oriented, uh, uh, you can kind of uh, recast what I just said uh, by uh, noticing that the language we, we use to describe a uh, non equilibrium quantum system uh, is slightly different than the standard, uh, let's say, uh, field theory that you're using for net matter. And the reason exactly is that uh, um, 
somehow the basic starting point of all Feynman diagrams uh, that you do in solid state physics uh, is the idea that uh, you have switched on the interaction very, very slowly. So the infinite past and the infinite future are actually not that far. They are all, all different only up to a phase, and that's how you build your S matrix. But of course, once you are out of equilibrium, you know your past, but you don't know your future because that's what you want to discover. So, so the, this gentleman here uh, uh, came up with the idea, which is very natural if you think about how quantum dynamics works, is just to build a, a contour in time that start from t equal to zero and wrap around uh, without any reference to the, to, the, uh, to the plus infinity. So this is the Kalish contour. And, and essentially, what you have to do in this contour, you have, for all your degrees of freedom, you have to double them to account for a field to be up on the upper or the lower branch. And this somehow, again, is telling you that there are two infor important information that you always have to track. And, uh, which uh, amounts to the spectrum of your system and to the statistics of the distribution of the uh, modes. And by the way, this is something that is, of course, not uh, completely decoupled from the, the classical world. You know that if you take h bar to zero everywhere here, you will recover something that is well known, and it is the Dominicist Martin Sigelos field theory uh, in, in, uh, in classical statistics. Okay, but there is also somehow uh, a little bit of, uh, or it is to me, uh, something that kind of a nightmare that uh, always uh, bothers me, and it's the following. So, uh, so you, you, you want to push uh, the quantum system out of equilibrium, but if you think in terms of somehow physics and some poor intuition, you would expect that a system which is sufficiently interacting and strongly coupled and, let's say, non-ergodic, eventually, through interaction and scattering, will lose the memory of initial condition, will thermalize, or will reach some uh, effective equilibrium. And this effective equilibrium will be typically hotter. Just because you have done work on your system, you have a current flowing through your system, so there is jewelling, or, or because you that actually work. And this work is extensive, and this extensive energy will be, in a way or another, some sort of tempered. And, uh, and so there is a way, modern way of saying all this, uh, uh, namely that typical, the typical high energy excited state are thermal, and this goes under the name of ATH, which, uh, which is a nightmare because it sometimes uh, it looks like we are all talking, talking about doing quantum mechanics uh, at finite temperature, which is somehow uh, boring uh, to uh, begin with. Uh, so I think the, the real question that I am trying to address, and I think what we are doing is trying to find answers for this question, is really, is it possible to see interesting quantum many-body effects which survive even far from a good So the, the, the next uh, uh, slide, I mean the rest of the talk, will be three examples that, uh, of strategies to somehow attack uh, this problem and try to avoid the get around this quantum eating. Um, and the, the strategy that I will uh, follow uh, are the following. So I will start shaping the uh, quantum many-body system. This will bring me to talk about Floquet and periodically driven uh, uh, quantum system. I will uh, otherwise switch off, switch on some randomness, some disorder in the, in the system and, uh, and take advantage of uh, what is called many-body localization. And the third uh, approach will be just to uh, take a cold bath and uh, uh, couple the system to a reservoir, and this will be a rather different kind of dynamical system which are open dissipative quantum system. Okay, so let's get, uh, let's get started with the first example, and I'll take uh, uh, somehow the standard model of uh, condensed pattern physics, uh, which, is, which I'm sure you are familiar with, which is the upper model. So fermions with spin interacting on a lap, opting on a lattice, and interacting with some uh, Coulomb repulsion, which is strongly uh, local. Uh, and instead of uh, looking at the equilibrium phase diagram of, of that, which is, of course, uh, uh, already a challenging question, what we will do is uh, actually start shaping the uh, interaction. So we will modulate the interaction around some value uh, with some amplitude and some frequency. And the, and the question we would like to ask is what will happen, what's the evolution of this quantum system after the start of this uh, drive, which uh, by the way will never stop. This is continuous drive. We are really thinking that this 
drive will go on forever. And it's important to stress that we, for the purpose of this, uh, of this uh, game, which again, has, uh, to a certain degree, is, uh, finds uh, application both in products and in those pump probe experiments, which can do uh, those kind of those kind of uh, modulation. But the important thing is that we will uh, stress, we will take the system to be closed. So quantum mechanics uh, uh, is a linear evolution, which means that your initial state, if it's pure, will remain pure. Uh, which means that those, always we have to really uh, talk about observables which are local, rather than the entire wave function of your system that will just uh, do a uh, sort of oscillation. So, uh, just to uh, have a basic idea of what we should expect out of this driving, it's good to uh, see uh, what linear response theory is, is suggesting. Uh, so, if you do exactly uh, uh, what they said, so you, you start, uh, you cover with a perturbation which is periodic, you can put how some observable change in time. What you discover, which uh, I found uh, rather interesting is that, okay, the long time limit, this, this observable, the dynamics of the system will uh, somehow go uh, synchronize uh, with the external drive frequency. Uh, and what is interesting is that uh, the rate of energy absorption, so how much energy you are taking out of the, the drive, uh, is given by the essentially the value of the observable that is coming to the drive. You see, this quantity can go up and down. I mean, the drive is periodic, so uh, it can change the sign, but when you integrate over a period, over a number, let's say n uh, period of your drive, what you discover is something rather basic, but uh, somehow reassuring, is that uh, the energy absorption is positive, is proportional to the dissipative part, uh, part of the response function of the frequency of the drive, so the system is taking energy out of the drive, and then you expect that uh, uh, eventually if the interactions are sufficiently strong and uh, the system is non integrable, uh, this uh, system will uh, thermalize, will go to thermal equilibrium, and the thermal equilibrium that you should expect in absence of any energy conservation will be infinite temperature. So, uh, again, this is uh, the most, uh, if you like, uh, uh, extreme case of nightmare. You start from a system which is quantum and cold, you put a drive, it goes to infinite temperature, end of the story, what's the point? And of course, uh, uh, luckily, it's not uh, that simple. Uh, there are, of course, uh, uh, various ways in which you can uh, uh, get around, around this. One idea that uh, was proposed in, in actually different contexts, uh, in, in the context of heavy ion collisions and also in the context of thermalization and quenches, is the idea of what is called pre thermalization or, or in the context of periodic drive, floquet pre thermalization. So, uh, this just means that uh, depending on your initial condition, some dynamics will be very fast and, and thermalized quickly to your equilibrium fixed point, but some other initial condition can actually deviate quite uh, a lot from, uh, from, from that and spend uh, a long time around some uh, fixed point that has nothing to do maybe with, with thermal equilibrium. So this, this pre-thermalization I think is very easy to understand if you think about periodic driving. And uh, if you think about taking the frequency uh, to be very, very high, because if you remember the energy absorption is proportional to the, the dissipation at the drive frequency, so if your drive frequency is far away from, ev from, from everything, you just not, don't absorb energy, so you don't thermalize, so the heating is exponentially small, and so you might expect some sort of intermediate long time metastable state that will take really long time, exponential time, uh, the scale exponential in the frequency to thermalize. What I will show you is that there is another way to, uh, uh, to, to get this pre-thermalization that I think is more interesting because it comes uh, out of the interplay between interaction and, and drive. So, just a slide to see how we address this problem of fermions periodically driven. Uh, we do this using non-equilibrium dynamic analysis theory, which you can see it as a sort of uh, non-perturbative resummation of uh, the many body diagrammatics, which becomes exact in the limit in which your lattice has infinite uh, uh, connectivity. And in this limit, the many body problem maps to a much simpler local problem, a single site in an external bath, which you still have to solve and is rather non trivial, but it's way, way uh, uh, simpler, of course. So uh, I'm not going to 
enter more into the details, but if you want to know, we can, you can ask me or Francesco uh, uh, about it. So, let me show you the, the results of this, uh, this uh, driven, driven upper model. Uh, so, uh, we looked into the dynamics of doubly occupied sites. So, what is that? So, this is the average of this operator here. Essentially, it tells you how many sites in your lattice are doubly occupied. Since there is a upper repulsion, you would expect in equilibrium to have very low double occupancy if the interaction is large, uh, just because of Coulomb repulsion. Uh, so we and, and what I am showing here is that the dynamics uh, in uh, as a function of time uh, change very much whether your interactions are intermediate or whether interactions are very large. So you see essentially on this left uh, plot uh, double occupancy as a function of time. You see essentially an exponential relaxation to a value which is uh, to a plateau. This plateau is 0 0.25 one quarter, which uh, sounds the democratic occupation of all possible local state, which sounds like infinite temperature. Indeed, uh, we, we look into more in details to the property of this state, and we can see explicitly that the system is thermalizing to infinite temperature, as we would expect. Some of the surprises, this guy, so uh, large interaction, uh, you see, same time scale, as a function of frequency, <coughs> you see that uh, the dynamics uh, doesn't seem to uh, want to want to go any anywhere close 0 0.25. So the the, uh, the red curve, for example, gets stuck here, and uh, as long as we run uh, those uh, dynamical equations, it seems never to uh, go away from there. But something strange happens as you change the frequency of your drive, in the sense that you see as I increase this uh, frequency and uh, I uh, hit a special value, uh, instead the dynamics becomes very fast. The system thermalizes very easily. Uh, so what actually uh, we, we have found here is that some sort of dynamical transition, the relaxation mechanism can change dramatically with respect to the drive frequency. And the reason for that, uh, one way of seeing it, is that these doublons, so this W occupied side, of course they are very, uh, they don't want to move too much in presence of interaction, but the drive uh, is another energy scale that can provide energy to these doublons. And as long as there is a resonance, namely how much energy costs to move a double, if this is matched by the drive, they can actually be happy and, and thermalized. So that's somehow what, what we are seeing. And, uh, and there is uh, other, other things that uh, come out of this, uh, of this result. There is an inversion of population, so somehow a sort of tendency to the system to develop an attraction, which is very, very interesting if you think about superconductivity. So there are a few things that we would like still to, um, to, uh, to uh, investigate here. But this is somehow one of the uh, some of the examples. Let me move on. And as I said, the other possibility is to switch on this order. And uh, uh, so uh, the question here is, can we be even more uh, dramatic and instead of being stuck into pre-thermal state, just never go to thermal equilibrium? So, uh, and this idea, uh, in some sense, goes back to Anderson localization. Um, Anderson was studying what's the effect of quench disorder of, on a transport, of course, it's clear that uh, transport changes dramatically the diffusion. Uh, but what people always thought is that, again, for some sort of uh, quantum heating uh, uh, mechanism, as soon as you have interaction in the game, this interaction will make the system thermalized. So, Anderson localization will never survive interaction. This was uh, actually uh, questioned by uh, uh, Bas Palainer and Schuller in now, 10 years ago, and more recently, even observed with uh, uh, cold atoms uh, in, in sort of quasi random uh, potential. So, MBL is a, is a phase which, uh, in which thermalization completely breaks down, so uh, you don't have to worry about eating at all. And that's, I think, very interesting, really, to explore non equilibrium physics without having. Uh, to deal with nightmares uh, about, uh, about that. So, um, uh, there are, of course, consequences of MBL, which you can immediately see they sound uh, strange and interesting. For example, you can have broken symmetries in low dimension. This is not possible in, in equilibrium statistical mechanics just because thermal fluctuation kill the order, uh, but since the system does not thermalize, this does not hold, and, and so on. 
and so forth. So what uh, people typically uh, look in this context is the XXZ uh, chain in 1D, um, uh, and so this is the standard model for MBL, and if I have to just discuss in one slide what's MBL, is the system which develops uh, uh, somehow self consistency, some extensive set of local internal motion. So, conserved, char conserved charges uh, that make the system not able to thermalize. So, the effective Hamiltonian that describes MBL is an Hamiltonian uh, of um, only, you see, only uh, commuting operators. And out of this, you can get uh, immediately consequences about the properties of the, this MBL fix. So, uh, what we try to do is to try to uh, actually construct uh, numerically or analytically this effective Hamiltonian starting from a microscopic model. And uh, we use uh, this method that is called the flow equation method, uh, which is some sort of renormalization of the Hamiltonian through a series of unitary transformations. This is something that was actually invented uh, again, I think, in high energy physics, but using condensed matter for a long time. This is a very nice review by CC. Uh, on in the, um, for its use in this other system. So, uh, again, I'm not uh, entering too much into details, but what is nice uh, that I can, can show is that basically using this method we are able explicitly to construct, starting from the microscopic model, this local integral of motion which are like the, the key properties of MBL. And so you see that this uh, uh, integral motion, the interaction between them decay exponentially. There is a length which grows as the disorder uh, becomes smaller, so when the system wants to delocalize. So this is something that uh, we want again to use uh, and explore different uh, uh, possibilities. Okay, so since I'm running out of time, I want to at least conclude the third example, uh, uh, which uh, is, is rather different, as I said, concerns the idea of capping the system to external reservoir. Um, this idea comes basically from quantum optics, uh, from the idea of having cavities, uh, where photons uh, are uh, bumping around the mirrors and eventually can leak. This leaking uh, is essentially uh, losses, essentially coming to cold uh, environments. And so the way you have to think to describe these models is not just using the Schrodinger equation, but using, uh, if you like, a Schrodinger equation, but integrating out all the degrees of freedom of the environment. So this is a master equation, a many body master equation, uh, that is. Uh, takes the name of Lindland master equation. And you see it has two terms. Uh, one is the familiar von Neumann evolution for your density matrix, and the other one is uh, uh, the term that comes from dissipation, from the effect of the environment on your system. It takes this form. So you already, already see that uh, having these two terms, you can expect some interesting uh, behavior, uh, whether, let's say, some sort of uh, interplay between unitary evolution and dissipative evolution. This can uh, result in uh, interesting non-equilibrium stationary state, or even more uh, phase transition between stationary state, or even more uh, you can even imagine to have to just don't have stationary state. Uh, that's uh, somehow what I'm gonna show in the uh, remaining. I think this is uh, to me rather rather remarkable. This goes under the name of limit cycle and instability. is a completely classical effect in a linear oscillator. We kind of try to see what's the quantum analog of that. So. Uh, the first example uh, that uh, concerns the limit cycle is you take a model, a rather generic model of interacting bosons on a lattice with this uh, drive dissipation. So you pump energy into the system, you allow the energy to leak up. So this model, if you forget about non-equilibrium, it's just a bose upper model, it's known to have a phase transition, its phase diagram is well known. So we look into this model and do uh, some uh, Kelly analysis of uh, what is the susceptibility of the order parameter and the result that came out uh, of this calculation, which I think it was uh, really surprising, is that the system wants to uh, break uh, the symmetry, develops uh, a singularity at a uh, finite frequency. So a finite frequency is a frequency which is completely, uh, let's say, emerging. It's not set by the frequency of the drive, it's not set by anything, it's some internal scale that the system develops. Now, if you come from condensed matter, you know that all uh, phase transition that you have in mind are always static, uh, equilibrium phase transition are typically static. So sensitivity diverge at zero frequency, and there is an order parameter that is static. So once we saw that, I think uh, we were uh, Pretty, pretty excited of this sharp finite frequency criticality. There is a rather in, immediate way of understanding what's going on if you look at the time evolution. Uh, the time evolution of the orbit parameter goes 
through a transition, uh, let's say, between a normal phase in which the system just relaxed, there is a steady state, everything is fine, to a region in which instead you start to develop oscillations which are self-sustained and uh, this oscillation just never then out. So while you are breaking the U1 symmetry of the bosons, you are also breaking time transition invariants. And I think this is, so people use, like to call these kind of things time crystals and there are various uh, interests in, in this, but I think this is uh, rather uh, striking non equilibrium effect that you would never uh, expect uh, that I never expect. So uh, there are, of course, interesting uh, things that we want to do, in particular try to do some RG uh, of, uh, out of it. And if I have one minute, uh, yes, okay, then if I have one minute, I also have something that is still in progress, but uh, uh, is also very interesting, again, about the possibility of just losing your stationary state. So this is the phenomenon of instability, again, it's something very simple if you think about it, classical, uh, uh, from a classical point of view, you take just a nonlinear oscillator with drive of distribution. It satisfies some equation of motion, some nonlinear equation of motion, and <coughs> depending on the parameters, uh, there are regions of parameters in which this stationary state is not unique. So if you plot some uh, observable as a function of the drive, you see that this, you see this sort of hysteresis. Now this is a zero-dimensional model, and you know that quantum fluctuation, you can expect that quantum fluctuation will be very strong and kill this uh, instability. What we would like to understand if there is a many-body version of this instability, uh, and how this many-body instability manifests. So we, we took, uh, with uh, Gregoire and Mackay, a guy we looked into a uh, one-dimensional chain uh, of driven DC body spin. So again, you have a spin one half, uh, there is a coherent drive and there is again these losses everywhere the system, the spin can flip. So this model is nice because uh, at the mean field level we know, we can study it all and uh, the, uh, we know that there is uh, by stability. Uh, so if you plot this diagram, there are regions where, uh, where the city state is unique and there are regions where the city state is not unique. If you look into this region, you will see again hysteresis in, for example, the number of the polarization of the spin as a function of of the, of the external parameter, you see some nice steps. So the question that we are trying to uh, understand is what happens to this beyond mean field and what is the effect of quantum fluctuation and whether there can be a quantum, uh, macroscopic quantum by, by stability. This is something in progress, so I don't have a final answer, but uh, I will show what uh, Gregoire has, um, has done uh, and uh, we are trying to understand. So uh, in 1D you can do numerics, which is essentially uh, exact, uh, even for this stability system, these are NPO simulation. And so what I'm showing here is exactly the same plot, the magnetization as a function of the external parameter. You remember uh, in mean field you have a very sharp transition. Here it seems that this transition is completely washed uh, away, so the, 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 the variation is very smooth. Nevertheless, there is some increase of relaxation time, which kind of correlates uh, more or less where, where we see the, uh, the, the change in the, in the, in the magnetization. So there is some suggestion that <clears throat> in one dimension this might not survive. We want to try to understand how this uh, is happening and what is really the role of, of quantum fluctuation. I think I am uh, done with that, uh, so I will uh, wrap up. I, uh, I hope I try to uh, convince you of why, what are the questions around in, uh, in quantum equilibrium physics, and especially the point of view is that, of course, we are looking at, uh, at excited states. These excited states are hot, but they are not necessarily boring. And, uh, and so, as uh, uh, I mentioned, a couple of things that we want still to do, but I think overall the big idea is try to merge these three directions and, uh, and enhance as much as possible the possibility to have non-thermal uh, being. And with this, I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you very much. you can construct, uh, let's say, at least you can bound uh, the operator that you analyze the Hamiltonian, this is the, the case that was analyzed by Imri. 
So if you go to very strong disorder, then you yes. so he, he provides a transformation. So can you compare? Yeah, we didn't compare with Imbri, we didn't compare with Imbri, but essentially in spirit that's exactly what we're doing. So if you see the, the answer, so the idea of this method is that you give an answer for your running Hamiltonian at a certain scale, and the answer that we are giving is essentially uh, the answers of the effective uh, Hamiltonian diagonal phase. And so the idea is that as you run the uh, flow method, this off diagonal term so will just decay away and will, you will obtain uh, the first term of the expansion of this effective Hamiltonian. Of course, uh, you generate many more terms and that you have to, to disregard. As uh, we, you get uh, a clark disorder, the, the, the importance of this term goes away. Of course, uh, what happens at the transition and how you can describe the transition in this language is one of the, the open questions. Of course, this, uh, let's say, lowest order truncation is able only to capture the angle phase, but not the, the, the transition. And I think one would need to include some sort of feedback and self consistency. We haven't thought about that, but I think that would be nice. Thank you. Any further questions? Wave your hands because I can't see much from here. But I don't see any hands, so let's thank Marco again.